is a brief demonstration on how to use the triple output power supply to generate a voltage and how to read that voltage with the multimeter. So first we need to turn on the instruments. And they're both going to come in the default states. So the default state for the power supply is to have the output off, which is a good thing. You know, that way voltage won't appear across the terminals as soon as you turn it on. And if we want to turn the voltage on or off, we push the output on or off button. So you can see I pushed that, and now the display changes where we have a voltage on the left-hand side of the screen and then a current on the right-hand side of the screen. Now, if we want to know which set of power supplies that voltage corresponds to, you can see down there there's a plus 6 volt symbol. So that means that we're measuring the value of the voltage and current on these two terminals right here, which are the plus 6 volt supply. If we want to change that, say to the plus 25 volt supply, we push this button, changes to plus 25. Now it's measuring the voltage and the current across this terminal and that terminal. If we want to measure the minus 25, push the minus 25. Now we're measuring the voltage between this comm terminal and the minus terminal right there. So it's not very interesting because the voltage is zero, so nothing really is happening. So say if we wanted to change the voltage on the output of the 6 volt terminal, push the 6 volt button, and you can see there's a digit flashing right there. So if I turn this knob, that'll change the value on the digit right there, and it'll put a voltage on the output of the power supply that corresponds to that voltage right there. So right now I have 0.599 volts or approximately 0.6 volts across these two terminals. Now say if I want to get really picky and set on an exactly 6.6 volts, I could use these arrows to move the uh, digit that we're trying to control and then turn the knob. So now we're at 0.6 volts across these two terminals. And there's no current flowing, which makes sense because we have an open circuit on these two terminals right here. So now say we want to measure that voltage using the multimeter. So when we turn on the multimeter, it defaulted to millivolts DC, or volts DC, it's an auto-ranging instrument. So if we want to measure the voltage across the 6-volt supply, we make a connection to the negative terminal of the 6-volt supply, and we plug that into the low terminal on the voltmeter right here. So the low terminal is the common terminal, or what we're calling the ground. So we make that connection, Still nothing happens, which makes sense because we haven't completed the circuit. We plug the other terminal into the positive on the 6 volt supply, and that goes into the high terminal here, which is used for measuring volts, as it says on the face of the instrument. So we make that connection, and you can see that things are good. Our volts here, we have 0.6 volts that we're measuring on a supply that's programmed to 0.6 volts. So all is good. So now if we want to put more voltage on there, say I want to move more significant digits, I move this over to the left one. Now if I go to 2.599 or 2.6 volts, it changes and you can see that corresponding change over here. Now one thing to note about these power supplies is they're current limited. Now I could short circuit the power supply by taking the two connectors that are plugged into the output of the power supply and shorting them together like this. And when I do that, you can see that the current goes up to the maximum current, which is 5 amps on this, and the voltage drops down there. So that's what we call a current limiting power supply. It's a good safety feature, and it has other uses in the lab. So if I disconnect the short circuit, now we're back to drawing you know, virtually no current again.